Sweden's Jimmy Tactor has taken the art of training trotters to new heights. His talents have produced a list of stars that reads like a who's who in harness racing. But Tactor will always be identified with Moneymaker, the queen of trotting, and the two-time horse of the year. Tonight, we'll talk trotting with Jimmy Tactor, the man behind Moneymaker, on Track Talk live from the Meadowlands Racetrack in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Hello again, everyone. I'm Sam McKee, and welcome to tonight's edition of Track Talk. For the next half hour, we are talking harness racing, and we welcome your Jimmy calls, Tactor your comments, and your... Where to put them and when to win. Four million dollar driver seasons, but as a trainer, the co-winner of the Glen Garnsey Award last year with Mark Ford, another brilliant season for Jimmy Tactor, who joins us this evening. Jimmy, how are you? I'm very good, thank you, Bob. Jimmy Tactor, you have uh, something that nobody else has ever done, a couple of notes here. Let's take a look. There's been three horses of the year in a row that you won back in uh, 1997, 98, 99. The only trainer to ever do this with two different horses, Malabar Man and then Moneymaker twice. And back in 1997, I think this is the most amazing one of all. He's the only trainer ever to have horses of the year twice in the same year on two different continents. Malabar Man here and over in Sweden, Kramer Boy. That's, uh, that's quite a bit of uh, work, I would have to think, Jimmy. How do, you, uh, how do you manage horses, let alone horses of the year, on two different continents there? Uh, well, I've been very fortunate. I have a very good staff and people that I can communicate overseas. And, uh, you know, I have good connections. So the overseas part has uh, been working out very well for me. When did you come here from Sweden? Uh, we came here uh, end of December at uh, 1982. And you were working for who at that point? Uh, Nordin Stable I was working for for two years. Okay, now uh, back in the uh, mid-1980s, you went on your own. Who was the first uh, marquee name there for the uh, Tactor Stable? Well, I don't know really. It was a bunch of decent horses came up, and the first really horse that maybe hit the big uh, board was maybe uh, Sartorius, I would say. Sartorius, and of course Sartorius got lost, lost in the Macklow Bell shuffle, and you told me earlier that you actually looked at Macklow Bell earlier in his career, didn't you? Maybe you would possibly buy him. Well, you know, I was actually sent down to look at this uh, colt because uh, we, I was training the, the year old, uh, one year old sister to him, and. Uh, and uh, I just didn't like the horse at the yelling. He was a very different look, kind of looking horse. Before we talk about the marquee horse, that being Moneymaker, how about Malabar Man, 1997, Malboros, Hambletonian, the year before the two-year-old trotter of the year. And now Malabar Man's first foals are two-year-olds. How are they acting? Uh, I have, uh, I think I have eight of them, and uh, I would say they look extremely promising at this point. And Malabar Man, the best memory for you there? Well, of course, it's got to be when he won the Hamiltonian, and especially my other horse was second, you know, they fighting down the stretch. That, that was a, you know, an unbelievable feeling. Well, t take us through what you were feeling right here. Malabar Man is still in the pocket here. What were you thinking at this moment? Well, you know, I actually, I, I, I kind of a little bit ruled out Malabar Man there because I had my eyes more on take chances that was coming all the way outside. It looked like he was a control of race, and here's Malabar Man coming up on the inside. And, uh, and uh, actually the outcome was the way it's supposed to be because uh, Malabar Man was so much better horse to take chances. 1-2 one, one, in the Hambletonian. Uh, what about your Hambletonian prospects for this year? I, I think I have two decent uh, Valley Victory Colts uh, that uh, was very lightly raised last year. One is a full brother to Continental Victory. He's uh, made 90,000 last year. He qualified twice here at Midlands and uh, qualified very good. We just uh, qualified him from behind and he came home very good. I think he's going to be okay. Then I have another horse named uh, Victory Sam that's also qualified one in 58 here and he's uh, looked like he's coming back good. Moneymaker, the winningest horse in history. He retired last year in the fall. What's the first time you laid eyes on Moneymaker? I saw her as a yearling in the sale, and she was, uh, you know, a huge mare, and, uh, you know, a lot of people turned away from her because she was uh, just too big. And when did you actually become uh, her trainer? When did that happen? Uh, I got her at uh, the end of her three-year-old season, and, uh, you know, she was in such a great shape, and, uh, you know, basically I was just a babysitter for her. Take a look at some notes on Moneymaker, who was uh, the only female to be repeat as horse of the year. Richest harness horse of all time. Not only is she the richest harness horse of all time, she's got 35% more than anybody else, which is outrageous. Uh, winning is Trotter here, the only Trotter to make a million dollars here at the Meadowlands. Jimmy, was there any track that she favored over any others? Uh, no, not really. Well, uh, she liked Midlands. Uh, she liked big tracks, and uh, she raced good in France. She, I mean, she's she she could handle everything, and she, she you know, 
vote to the horse of the century, so it tells you everything, basically. And the last note there was in full to Valley Victory. Now, with the problems of having in Kentucky, uh, how did that work out, and where is she now? She's in Connecticut right now, and uh, we actually haven't heard because they're supposed to check her today again, And uh, but, you know, five, six days ago, she, everything was all right. Okay, one eight seven seven cna live your comments and questions for Jimmy Tactor right now. How about a chance to win dinner for two with our quiz as we go to break? Jimmy Tactor's first Meadowlands driving victory. Can you remember who this was? Here's a hint. The very next year, the horse was a Hambletonian favorite, and after that became a huge, prominent sire on the trotting ranks. Frank Todd from the Big M. We're live on CN8. The number to call is 1-877-CN8 Live. We're talking trotting with special guest Jimmy Tactor, the man behind Moneymaker. Also with us, Ace Meadowlands statistician Bob Hollywood Hayden. Again, give us a call, 1-877-CN8 Live. And right now, let's head out to the phone lines. We have Scott from Washington Township standing by. Scott, thanks for calling Track Talk. Yeah, thanks. How are you, Jimmy? I'm very good, thank you. Good. Let me first congratulate you on your success. I think it's wonderful. Oh. Thank you. Uh, Jim, when you're purchasing a yearling trotter, um, after you've gotten by the um, breeding aspect of it and you go to actually look at the stature of the horse, is there anything particular you're looking for or are you just looking to avoid blemishes and things of that nature? Well, we, we do a big research on every yearling we're buying. We, uh, we see them uh, at the farm uh, before the sale, actually, and see the horses turned out and uh, see them move in the field and, uh, and, and really examine the horse. And uh, sometimes we even go through and x-ray the horse. And uh, if we're really serious about the horse, we go through everything. So basically, mostly what we're buying are very fairly gone through. Jimmy, tell us if you can about uh, money maker with all the travel and she did back and forth. How does the quarantine situation work in all the different countries? She went in seven different countries. Well, uh, going to Europe is very easy. It's actually no quarantine. You go right into the, any stable, but uh, you got to make sure the horse don't stay in over 60 days in Europe. Then you can go back here without no problem. Basically, just three day up in Newburgh. But the uh, moneymaker sometimes she stay over 30 days, early 60 days, and uh, she had to go in quarantine for two months, uh, two weeks in uh, Maryland. Well, let's go back to the phone lines. Greg is joining us on the uh, telephone right now. Welcome to Track Talk, Greg. Hi, Sam. Hi, Holly. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, hey, Jimmy. I was wondering if you could give us some background on your brother Johnny. Is he a trainer over in Europe? And how many how many drives, um, how many winning drives does he have over there? Uh, my brother, he he's, he used to be trainer on his own uh, in uh, Sweden, but the last uh, eight years he went over just to basically drive races, and uh, and uh, he have a couple thousand wins. He's leading drivers uh, a couple times over there, and uh, he's uh, racing much in Italy and Germany and all over. So he, he's one of the top uh, drivers over there. Well, sounds like he's getting to be the uh, John Campbell overseas, concentrating more on the catch driving than the training. Speaking of overseas, when you ship a horse overseas to race, it seems like the U.S. horses do very well over there, but it's much harder for the horses from Europe to come back to the United States and race. Do you find that to be true? Uh, not really. I mean, uh Actually, American horses had, ha, hasn't done that good, you know. I mean, I'm I'm one of the few guys who had luck over there, you know. So I, I had uh, Malabar, Malabar Man was over in Italy, and uh, Money Maker, and Kramer Boy, and uh, Mr. Lavec, and I've been very fortunate. But a lot of American horses had a lot of tough time over there. Well, let's go back to the phone lines. Ellen from Colts Neck is with us. Hi, Ellen. Hi. Hello, Jimmy. How you doing? Hi. I have a question about trotters and making breaks. Certainly, uh, when a horse makes a break out on the racetrack, it's very frustrating to the trainer, but it's even more frustrating to the person that's fed on them. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about why they do that and what you as a trainer then have to do to try to prevent that from happening? Well, it's a lot of different aspects. The mostly trotters that make breaks either have a, you know, a gating problem, which you have to, you know, it's a different timing. You have to have the right timing on the horse, and uh, in a lot of cases, uh, the horse is maybe not uh, physical in shape. Uh, so it's uh, it's those two aspects. If you have those two aspects in uh, in intact, you you're probably all right. And uh, because the breeding is so perfect today that uh, most horses are very natural, it's not uh, too difficult to hang them upright. But the key is to keep them sound. 
Well, one eight seven seven CNA Live is the number to call with your questions for Jimmy Tactor. And tomorrow is a big day here at the Big M. It's the second jewel of the Triple Crown in thoroughbred racing, the Preakness from Pimlico Racecourse in Baltimore, Maryland. As Monarcos, the Derby winner, takes on ten rivals. Advance wagering available right now. Preakness Day tomorrow at the Big M. More track talk when we return. Talk live from the Meadowlands Racetrack in East Rutherford, New Jersey on CN8. We're talking harness racing until 7 o'clock, and thanks for joining us. I'm Sam McKee, along with Meadowlands handicapper Bob Hollywood Hayden and our special guest, Jimmy Tactor, the trainer of Moneymaker and Malabar Man, one of the top trotting talents in the sport. Give us a call, 1 877 CN8 Live, or you can email your questions to tracktalk at njsea.com. Right now, let's go to one of our email questions. For Jimmy Tactor, and this concerns Pacers. Jimmy, have you ever trained a large stable of Pacers, and why do you prefer Trotters? No, I have not uh, trained a large sta stable of Pacers. Actually, my first horse I had here was a Pacer. I just bought him just because of my curiosity of Pacers, and uh, he ended up to win 30 races, and it was a lot of fun. But now the main thing I concentrate on Trotters because it's uh, it's uh, you know my trade from Europe, and in Europe we don't have Pacers, and uh, and uh, we dealt with a lot of difficult trotters, so uh, actually the American bread is uh, so much advanced compared to horses we grew up with. And, uh, and I, I think if I concentrated it, I have a little edge, you know, into doing that uh, versus stables that mix up a little bit. I think you're better off to stay at one game. Well, now that Track Talk is available on the Internet through our website, TheBigM.com, we are getting calls from all over the nation. Right now, Mel from California is standing by. Mel, thanks for calling Track Talk. Great hearing your voice, Sam. I'm a big fan of yours. Have been for way before you were at the Meadowlands, too. Well, thank you. Um, maybe someday you should be the guest on Track Talk so we could ask questions about the art of uh, race calling. You're just fantastic. Uh, well, Jimmy, you. I really enjoyed the Red Mile performance last year where Moneymaker set the world record under saddle with Julie Crone. I'm wondering how you came up with the idea to close her career that way and what the response was and if you maybe had any second thoughts about going for the world record in a race mile. No, well, you know, actually it was uh, uh, Jeff Stein and I always talked about how we should retire. And after she won up in Canada, a half million dollar race up that world record, you know, I mean, I didn't feel like to bring it out in a cheap race in Lexington and end up like that, you know. So we discussed a little bit how we're going to do this. And, uh, you know, and actually it was Jeff and uh, Ellen Harvey that, uh, you know, had a little idea about it. And, uh, you know, they thought uh, I would be uh, against it. But actually it's, uh, I think it's the best way I could ever do it. Greyhound went out that way. And, uh, you know, I never had a second doubt. The first time I jumped up on her back myself and I felt right away that she was nothing against it. Actually, she enjoyed did so and uh, the feedback on it a couple of people say that you know kind of look a little stupid and blah 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 but you know basically mostly people was uh, for it i've never seen a crowd cry and uh, acting like they did the way she went out so for me it was the maybe one of my biggest moments well julie crone uh, said nothing but kind words for moneymaker after that performance at lexington she was very impressed with her power and uh, her ability and how well she did for uh, not having been ridden all that much let's go back to the phone lines to jill in east rutherford Jill, thanks for calling Track Talk. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Sorry about that, Joe. Are you with us, Joe? Yes, Sam. This is Big Joe. How are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, I want to ask Jimmy, it's last Hamiltonian day when uh, there was the uh, time inquiry against Moneymaker. Did, did you think uh, there was a chance he would come down? Uh, I don't even recall the uh, inquiry against her in, uh, in Hamiltonian. I think that was the Breeders' Crown. In, uh, in the British Crown, it wasn't there. It was the first turn. Oh, with, uh, yeah, it was yeah, sitting in the back of the yes. pack, I believe. Yes, yeah. yes, I, I recall that. Uh, you know, in the first turn, was something happened. No, I, I spoke to Wally right away, and Wally said there's nothing to worry about. So, you know, normally when the guys say it like that, then uh, then it's nothing to worry about. Jimmy, uh, Tactor, Sylvester, and Gerfine won the last four Hamiltonians, 96 to 99. Can little guys still win the Hamilton? Sure, you know, I mean, it's uh, you know, always newcomer coming up in this game. You know, it's always most windy up on the top. You, we got to produce every year, every year, you know, and it's it's not easy to come up with the top horse every year, but, uh, you know, we work hard at it that, and uh, we concentrate maybe at more younger horses and we're a little bit more fortunate to train a little bit better stock than other guys do and, uh, you know, th th different things, but there's a reason to it too. Well, the stake season is heating up and so is the weather here at the Big M and we are looking 
looking forward to a big weekend on Memorial Day, and we certainly hope you'll join us on Saturday, May 26th, for our McDonald's Open House, a behind-the-scenes look at racetrack life from 9 a.m. till noon, and then live racing on Monday, post time at 1.10. It's the McDonald's Country Festival at the Big M with ride shows, entertainment, great food, great music, and more. Be sure and join us. We'll be back with more Track Talk on CN8, live from the Big M, right after this. This is Track Talk at the Big M. And welcome back to Track Talk from the Meadowlands Racetrack on CN8. Sam McKee along with Bob Hollywood Hayden and Jimmy Tactor. And we're going back to the phone lines right now to Sarah in East Rutherford. Sarah, thanks for calling Track Talk. Yes, Jimmy. I was wondering if you had any standouts for this year's stake season, either the Hambletonian or the Hambletonian Oaks. Uh, not really. I mean, my three-year-old uh, group is, uh, you know, is nothing really stand out. So, you know, I don't expect uh, the greatest year on my three-year-old side, you know. So, uh, but my two-year-old's looking more promising, so hopefully they, you know, they're going to live up to my expectation. Well, it's surprising. Nobody has even hazarded a guess at the Bob Hollywood Hayden quiz where you can win dinner for two here at the Meadowlands Racetrack. Holly, let's revisit this week's quiz. Yeah, Jimmy Tactor's first ever Meadowlands driving victory came back in 1980. Three, the following year, the Hamiltonian favorite, and then from his first crop, Peace Corps and Valley Victory in back in 1988. Jimmy, who was that? Baltic Speed. Baltic. Now, did you know in 83 this was a really nice horse? Oh, he was uh, he was such a natural horse, and I mean, I trained about 90% of his training, and he was uh, just a special horse. And Valley Victory, of course, his son, has changed the breed a bit. Uh, would, you, would you agree with that? Uh, I, absolutely. I mean, the Valley Victory speed, it's uh, something you basically need in a in a, in a horse today. Well, let's take a look at a list of some of Jimmy's top trotters, and uh, there's quite a few of them. And, of course, Moneymaker probably ranks at the top, but there's several others that have had a big impact in harness racing. Jimmy, White Land Image uh, a couple years ago in the uh, Beacon course uh, shocked a few people, didn't it? Yeah, he was a lot of, lot of speed, not too much brain, but a lot of ability. And uh, let's see, we also have uh, Kramer Boy. We didn't see too much of him uh, around here. He was over in Sweden for that big year in 97. Well, he, he made a million dollars here as a two and three year old and made another million in Europe and he's standing stud in uh, Italy right now. What happened to San Pellegrino? San Pellegrino standing stud up in Canada and uh, he got a good book up there. I think he's going to be a very interesting stallion up there. And Gleam, of course, uh, now a brood mare. Malboro's raised her, won the Hamiltonian Oaks, bred her to the Hamiltonian winner, Malabar Man. What's up with the offspring there? We have a little two-year-old filly. Her name is Malabar Mist, and uh, you know, of course, she's very special. It's two Hamiltonian winner, both mother and father, and uh, and she look uh, quite nice actually. I think she's going to be okay. Will we see Mal Burrows driving Malabar Mist? Uh, I think so. I think Mal has been down in training, especially now when the weather is there. You know, he's going to he's been down more frequently, and he started warm up. Okay, Jimmy Tactor, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back next week with more track talk. Be sure and watch the inside track at midnight tonight on CN8. Next week, it's Chuck Sylvester, the man who's trained three Hamiltonian winners. For Jimmy Tactor at Hollywood Hayden, I'm Sam McKee. Thanks for watching.